Richard, it's lovely to have you here at London Film and Comic Con today. Now, you've had some quite dramatic moments yourself, haven't you, as Varric this season? I mean, the old flaming sword behind yeah. you. We spoke to Maisie Williams recently, and she said it, there actually was a flaming sword on set. Yeah, it wasn't CGI. It was, uh, I don't want to give too much away, but it was a, a special uh, set of swords that they made and they set fire to them and uh, it re they were lethal weapons. I mean, those things were very hot and uh, everybody kept out of my way when I was swinging that thing around. It was pretty dangerous. You felt like a, the badass in town with your flaming sword. The badass in town with a good heart. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. And what was it like um, battling against the hound? Well, it was pretty intense. I mean, that guy's... He's about twice my weight and uh, nearly half as tall as me again. So, uh, old Rory McCann. Uh, yeah, it was pretty. It was exhausting. We we did the fight over two days uh, in the cave that they made inside the studio. So it was uh, probably one of the most exhausting bits of acting I've ever had to do. Uh, he's an interesting character, Beric, isn't he? Because obviously, like Melisandre, he's a believer in the Lord of Light. Yeah. And um, why do you think he's put his faith in someone like Melisandre? And what do you think she's up to? Because she's an interesting character, isn't she? As Beric is himself. Well, I mean, Beric doesn't know that. Um, Beric doesn't know that much about her. Um, but of course, he knows about uh, the Lord of Light, and Thoros has basically taught him and um, introduced him to the the Red God. So um, he's, um, yeah, I think he's basically, he sees there's so much, so much horror and injustice in the world, you know, so I think um, someone who's a, a noble spirit is, is just desperate to cling on to something that is, that is good and that is, that is, that is that, you know, something that is um, beyond the kind of the woes and, you know, of, of man in, in, in this world, yeah. I mean, there's been some striking deaths throughout the seasons on Game of Thrones. I think you've had your own death and a reanimation, haven't you? What was that like filming that scene? Oh, that was great. I mean, it was very gory. I uh, I was rigged with so much blood, like liters of blood. So I don't know if you can actually see it, but whenever I get cut uh, down the shoulder, it's like there's fountains of blood come up. So it, it took hours to get all that that blood off. Afterwards, it was uh, pretty messy. Yeah. If you had to go out and not come back, not reanimate, if you had to have one of those striking deaths, how would you like to meet your maker as Beric? I think Beric should fight a dragon. Ooh, yeah, I like that. Fire with fire. I don't know. I just thought of that. No, no, that sounds good. Yeah. A flaming sword against a flaming dragon. Yeah, and a, you know, a good shield he could protect himself. I think uh, he'd be pretty good, yeah. And what about the Brotherhood Without Banners? What do you think they'll get up to next? Well, I think they're doing a good job protecting the, the weak and the misfortunate, but uh, if, if there is a war coming, and it looks like there is, you know, I think those boys should be, uh, should be at the forefront. And uh, either Beric or Thoros should be uh, with a flaming sword, uh, you know, being the kind of um, the, the shock troops, if you like, yeah. And what kind of qualities do you think you have to have to make it to the end on Game of Thrones? And do you think Beric has the qualities that you need to survive? Well, as is um, kind of evident uh, that it doesn't really matter if you're a good guy or a bad guy in this, you know, uh, death comes to anybody. So, you know, uh, you could be the, the best fighter in the world and still get cut down. So I think it's just the luck of the draw. I think whatever, you know, whether, whether the fates are smiling on you or not, that's, uh, that really decides it. But at the end of the books, at the end of the TV series, if you had to kind of bet who would be one of the last men or women standing, who do you think will still be there? I'd like Tyrion to be there. I think he's uh, my favourite character. And he's very funny as well. Yeah, I'd like, I'd like him to, to, to last to the end. He's a great character, isn't he? What is it that you particularly enjoy about how Tyrion is on screen? I think he's a good guy. Ultimately, you know, you know, there's, there's nobody really good apart from Beric. But uh, no, I think he's, uh, I think he's a really strong, strong guy, you know. Um, and I think, um, you know, and despite his size and everything else, I think he's just, I just think he's a, a he's a great character. He's also very funny, which is, is nice, you know, when you that kind of dry wit, which is great. How do you think you'd make out in Beric's world if you had to go back into Game of Thrones time? Uh, me? Well, I, uh, I, I trained at the RADA <laughs> three years uh, with swords, so um, I, I, uh, I don't know what it's like in real life using a sword and cutting people to bits, but uh, I don't know. 
I, I, I might last a few days. <laughs> That's all you can hope for in that world sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You'd be, you'd be lucky if you lasted a couple of seconds. What is it like uh, the thing with your co-stars on screen? Of course, you've been with people like Maisie Williams, yeah. uh, Joe Dempsey, Gendry, uh, Paul Kay of Saurus as well. Yeah. What are those guys like? Well, Paul's lovely. I mean, you know, uh, me and Paul just headed off. He's just a, he's a lovely guy to be around, you know. He's great fun. And so is Rory. We had a lot of laughs. Um, that I'll never forget that fight. We, we trained for a month uh, to do that fight. And we did it in two days. But it was the most grueling thing you could ever do. I mean, there were literally people standing with ice water. We could only fight for two minutes at a time because we were overheating and there was steam coming off us. And then they would, we would stagger out outside the, the, uh, into the fresh air and they would just douse us with freezing cold water so we didn't overheat. So that was inc uh, in incredibly grueling. Also because I was waving uh, the sword, uh, any oxygen that I was trying to get in the sword was the flames were sucking up all the oxygen so it may look kind of effortless but it was really hard work well, that's I think you know when you can make something look effortless that's great acting and great work behind the scenes because it does look effortless it looks very very natural I think the whole show is like that yeah well I think uh, Beric as well he's one of these fighters you know he doesn't He's not a, a grunter or a shouter, you know, he's incredibly like the samurai, he's, uh, he has the, 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 the calm, you know. Uh, he doesn't give much away because uh, that's the, a real warrior is, uh, you know, contained. What about behind the scenes moments that would be surprising to find out for fans, how something works or how it is behind the scenes on set, a typical day? Um, well, basically all my, all my stuff was done, most of my stuff was done in that cave. I think people would be amazed at the the heat that was in that cave. It was like we're talking nearly 50 degree heat um, with full armor, which weighs about three stone in weight, and fighting like that. It's pretty, I think people would 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 uh, you know they probably think oh wussy actors you know prancing around in tights, but no, uh, yeah you got to be pretty fit uh, uh, to 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 do those fight scenes. I mean, you're a pretty slim and fit guy, I can see, but you mean you must have. I mean, you, you, did you drop weight when you were doing that at all? Yeah, I did actually. Yeah, I mean, you, I, I put on about an extra half a stone because I knew I was going to lose that at least in those two days, and uh, I, I, I lost about a half or three quarters of a stone. Yeah, even though he was eating tons, you know. But the, the Rory McCann will tell you it, it was fierce. And you know you burn a lot of energy when you're, of course, when you're very hot. And what's it meant to you being part of Game of Thrones? It's been brilliant. You know, it's great to be part of a, a kind of a legendary series. And uh, I'm just surprised the amount of people who, who stop me and go, "Are you Barry Tintari?" It's like, oh, "No, I'm Richard Dormer." But uh, you know, it's 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 great. You know, and the, the the fans seem so lovely. You know, and they're just genuinely they they just love. They love the world, and it's a brilliant world to escape in. And finally, what would you like to say to fans of the show who are watching this video? Um, I'd just say, you know, keep watching and um, enjoy it, and I think uh, there's a lot more surprises coming up.